Hello, social workers, mental health professionals, and change agents. Welcome to another episode of the Social Work Rants Podcast. I'm your host, Bass Moreno. Saludos a todos. Greetings, everybody. Thank you for tuning in, tapping in, wherever you are watching or listening to this podcast. I appreciate all the love and support. Uh, continue rock with the podcast or all social media platforms on Instagram at the Social Work Rants Podcast. That is all one word. Uh, Twitter, X, whatever Elon calls it this week at uh, Social Work Rants, that's one one word, and uh, Facebook, aka Meta, type in the Social Work Rants podcast, hit that like button. Uh, shout out to everybody that's been uh, hitting that like button on the Facebook, it's been growing quite fast <laughs> recently, so uh, I, I appreciate the love. Uh, gracias a todos por su apoyo. So uh, make sure you rock the, the new podcast t-shirt, there's also the hoodie on sale, go to triumphthroughpain.com myshopify.com if there's any issues please let me know that shopify uh site uh i'm gonna have to talk to my my business coach about that shopify <laughs> page that it might have to be kaput <laughs> um with that being said uh speaking of my my business coach um uh, and you have to invest in yourself uh, i've been doing that the last seem like forever, but definitely the last three years since COVID and uh, between my business and podcasting and book, make sure you get the book, Trying Through Pain, How to Maximize Your Full Potential During Hard Times. I know you can't see it through the Zoom background. And of course, uh, Latinx and Social Work Volume 2 is out. Uh, actually, of the one-year anniversary of the book release is happened so uh shout out to everybody that's been getting the book has been getting a lot of traction so my guest at this time is my uh, social worker my my business coach been been doing great things helping me uh with this website has been kicking my butt <laughs> since i started with the website but even for ms sw how you doing Aw, I'm good. Thanks, Baz. It's not just the website we've been working on. <laughs> yes. Working, let's the, be clear. The whole, biz, the whole business model, the new yeah. business model of Bass City Entertainment, uh, doing business as Bass Moreno Consulting, mm -hmm. uh, focusing on uh, helping people of color in the sandwich generation, uh, Gen X, uh, helping with their uh, personal finances. Yeah. So, we, and we, I really want to commend you because, you know, it's been a little bit of a journey uh, yes. just coming to that, right? Because when you, when we started, um, you know, you had the, the poetry book, which you do, um, but we weren't sure, uh, you know, we were going in a couple of different directions. So mm -hmm. I love that through our work together, we've been able, you know, to highlight the thing that you love to do and that you're really good at anyway, which is connecting with um, your Latinx community and people of color in general, talking about um, these different aspects of financial wellness, especially as someone in the sandwich generation, because yes. you know you you are care are a caregiver, like you support your parents as well yes. as you know your kids and you uh, your kid's mom passed away and like you have such a wealth of knowledge and information when it comes to um finances and a lot of people didn't know that yeah so <laughs> I love that you're you're highlighting that now and you know just following following your passion and the thing that we really need anyway right now so no, absolutely. kudos to you for doing the work we've still got more work to do yeah absolutely but I, I, I've been putting in the putting in the work and it, it, it's it's hard you know, with working at nine to five and like mentioned taking care of my dad with you know two kids and yeah. one start brand new middle school, brand new high school, mm. wife working. Yeah, and right. Being a husband and making sure wife's needs are met and making sure dad is not driving himself crazy and uh, not driving yeah. myself crazy and and an entrepreneur. Yes. Being yeah. an entrepreneur and uh making the time because it does make the time and yeah. there's a lot of time that I think that's one, one of the number one underrated things it is you got to put in that that work it takes a lot yeah. of time and uh yeah my time is very very precious yeah. 
Yeah. I get my sleep though for the, everybody. Everybody says, gotta get yourself care. You need a rest. I do get my rest. Trust me. Like I'll pass out <laughs> oh, yeah. on, on my couch Listen. for a couple hours before yeah. I head to bed. So, um, yeah. I woke up from a nap right before this. <laughs> I had to do it. And, it. and as soon as I'm done with this, so uh, trying to get my body to wind down because I've been up since 4 15 this morning. So, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, for those, um, we have a, a an incredible summit, social work wealth summit coming up. The the conference, the conference. Yes, the conference. Yes, yeah. um, that that's coming up. Can't wait for that. Got got my ticket. You know, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, took PTO days just to, for the con- for the for this conference. So I'm really looking forward to it. And Does your audience great- already know about it? Uh, yes, I've had uh, hey. Christina Bodrick, who's been yeah. been on the podcast recently. She's she will be presenting. Uh, Catherine Moore, we just yeah. had her on. She's going to be on the podcast. So we've been uh, kind of talking about. You no, know, we've been talking about entrepreneurship uh, for a while on the podcast here and there. But really, uh, the conference has been getting some traction. I've heard uh, Marvin from uh, formerly known of Melanated Social Work did a live with. Uh, Joy Britt together, and they were talking about the the, the conference coming up. So uh, it's it's gaining its traction. Yeah, it's it's kind of uh, phenomenal because um, for anyone that hasn't heard about the Social Work Wealth Conference, um, check it out: socialworkworkwealthconference.com. dot com. Um, it's also on Instagram. Uh, <laughs> and when, when and- is it? It's it's um October nineteenth and twenty. It's in two weeks from today, Bass. Two weeks yes. from today. Um, I wanted you to say the dates. <laughs> okay, October nineteenth and twentieth, two thousand twenty-three. So if you're listening to this in twenty twenty-four or after, you're late. Um, but you could probably still get the recording somewhere. But yeah, so it's it's exciting because um, I mean, I I would have liked to have thought I was you know, making a dent in the social work profession, right? And helping to to shift us in our conversation. But I think what I've recognized through putting the conference together, right? And pulling all of these amazing social workers together is that um, while the social work profession is very broad and big, and a mm-hmm. lot of people are talking about um, where we should go, there there are a few of us that kind of, I guess, stand out or keep coming up in conversations. I'll say yes. it like that. That's and, true. and most of them are on this conference. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like, oh my God, it, it's amazing. The, the, the people that are going to be um, in, that are involved in this, not just leading social workers, but we've got people that are going to be, you know, presenting or showing up either in plenaries or keynotes or um, just doing, mm, what do you call it? Master classes that are prominent in fields, not necessarily social work, but in finance. Um, mm. So it's a really exciting time. And um, if you will allow me, can I just talk a little bit about like our keynote? No, absolutely. Yeah. So because you got you got a lot of heavy hitters. So but by all means, heavy hitters. So let me tell you, I'll, I'll say this, some insider uh, information for everybody. Our, the first person we went after was Brene Brown. Oh, that that now, would have definitely uh, <laughs> we would we would have had a mix mixed reception for that. You think so? <laughs> yes. Oh well, here's why we thought of her because I don't know that I've ever really heard her talk about the social work money alignment or misalignment or conversation. I don't really think I've heard her talk about that, but. I know that she charges like a hundred and something thousand dollars to speak. Mm. Right. And at the time we were pretty, we were overconfident. I'll say we were cocky and confident that any sponsor who heard about our conference would have been throwing money at us. And so we were like, well, it doesn't matter. She says she charges 300,000. We'll cover it. Um, And that was not the case. (laughs) And lucky for us, she turned us down. Um, 
I, I had a really good conversation with someone on her team, though, that was really gracious and said, like, hey, it's not you. She's just got some priorities and uh, she's she's super clear on what she's doing, where she's going, like who she wants to help, like the types of hmm. um, initiatives she wants to be involved in. And it's a it's a really narrow like it's a it's a niche. Right. right. And so ours did not fit in that niche. And so I was like, you know what? That's OK. Uh, <laughs> well, if not Brene Brown, we'll get someone that's equally as dynamic, equally as as uh, inspiring and somebody who also will attract people. And I I didn't necessarily think that it had to be someone that had to be a social worker, but I knew this I knew the story of Stacy Madison, the founder of Stacy's Pita Chips. Mm -hmm. And I knew she was a multimillionaire. Who knows she might be a billionaire by now. But um I knew she had been in LCSW. I knew she had had her own private practice uh, for years. And I knew a bit of her journey into the healthy food space and how reportedly anyway, I think Forbes reported that she sold Stacy's Pita Chips, her company that she started with her ex-husband. Um, they reported that she sold it to Frito-Lay for like $250 million. Wow. And then I also heard her say in an interview that Frito-Lay wasn't even the highest bidder, but that she was inspired by, you know, their, their values. And they wanted to, she was led by her values. And I knew that she had started another company called Stacy's Juice Bar that closed after the pandemic. And I knew that she started another food company called Be Bold Bars that she has right now. And anybody that orders the VIP package will get um, Be Bold Bars in their, in their, box because we're doing a, a VIP box. Um, but yeah, I just, I knew that she was an entrepreneur. I knew that she wasn't scared about of, of money. Mm -hmm. I knew that she was generous. It seemed like she was generous in giving because she has like a, a mission or a foundation where she, I don't know if it's a foundation or a accelerator where she helps women, I think primarily of color with their uh, startups, with their social mm -hmm. enterprise startups, right? And so like, I knew she was aligned. So I, we reached out and her people have been amazing to work with. And so she's our first keynote on Thursday. And um, yeah, I, I'm really also encouraging people if they've got questions for our panel, for our keynotes to like, let us know or any of our panelists let us know. But um, I'm really excited to have her as a, like she uses her social work skills and everything she does even though she's not practicing clinical social work at this point. Right. right? So, and she's super wealthy. And um, so I love that. Um, and then our second keynote is Stedman Graham. And a lot of people, people either have one or two reactions when I Oprah say. Oprah Stedman. Oprah Stedman, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, because so, I'll say, do you know Stedman Graham? They're like, mm, I only know Oprah Stedman. I'm like, yeah, that's the only Stedman. <laughs> that's the Stedman I'm talking about. Um, or if I say, do you know Stedman Graham or Stedman? And if they say no, I say, do you know Oprah? And they say no. Uh, or no, they, sorry, nobody ever says no for Oprah. <laughs> They'll say like, yeah, I'm like, do you know her partner? And some people really don't know yeah. who she was, who she's booed up with. But um, I also knew his story. I had, um, I had been made aware that he was a social worker. He had his bachelor's in social work when I was in grad school in New York, so we're talking 2000. Yeah. In mm. 2000, um, it might've been 2001. It was you, it was 2001. Cause he spoke, he was one of the speakers for United Nations social work day. Okay. And, um, I went and, and uh, I was like, well, why do they have Stedman here until I saw his credentials? He's got a master's in education and he talks a lot about identity identity leadership and at the time you know his thing was like hey I was a black boy growing up I didn't know my identity and it wasn't until I really started to dig into who I am or, um, that I, I could see a bigger vision for my life and so now my passion is talking to young people about knowing who they are and corporations and things like that he's a corporate coach um, oh, and wow. a consultant yeah so he's written a book I, I got his book called Identity Leadership. I, it maybe came out like right before the pandemic or during the pandemic. Um, 
And what I admire so much about him is he has a chapter in that book called Oprah. And he's blatant about like, hey, he's like, look, I know who I'm dating. Like I knew, <laughs> like I, I'm not, um, I, I know I'm not like going to pretend like Oprah's not a big deal. And like, you need to, you know, pay attention to me because I'm my own person too. He's like, no, no, no. I know people don't uh, like associate me with Oprah and she's a big deal. He's like, when we got together, she was already on the rise. So it was important for me to be secure in who I was and have my own identity. And so he's like, it's, it served me so well because I don't have to live in her shadow. I can be my own person right? and I can be with her and I can celebrate her and she can celebrate me and whatever people say, I know who I am. And I think that's such an important conversation for social workers, at least for me. I remember kind of going through a little crisis when I realized, and again, we're talking over a decade ago for me, but realizing that like, oh my goodness, my limiting social work beliefs are nurtured by my experience as a social worker that tells me, don't worry about the money. It's not important. Like it's not about the money. It's just about the the, the impact that we make. Right. And because at the time I found myself in so much debt and with no tools at all, no insight to get out and, and no plan. Like I didn't know where to turn. And I'm like, wait, I'm a social worker. I should figure this out. But then when I realize like oh wait my social work messaging doesn't want me like doesn't value money in this way it's like what how is this <laughs> possible and that's when I was like no uh, I need to be part of the change for this so that's when rich social worker came up but anyway I went through a little crisis because I was like well if if my profession that I've raised my hand to be a part of, I have so much identity. My identity is as a social worker at the time, right? I was like, I don't know who I am without this this social work identity, but I feel like it's betrayed me in, mm. in this really vulnerable place. And so I didn't know what to do. I was really struggling for a while. So I love that Stedman's gonna be talking about identity leadership and what that means for us as social workers who who also maybe have some hangups about money or are, are getting through some things or like, how do we hold those two conversations about um, caring about money in a way that maybe we we dismissed in the past right. and, and also, um, and also mm, aligning with our values of like service and mm. giving and um, volunteering in many cases. So, I'm just excited. I'm excited about the whole conference, but those two, I think, are super pivotal to what we're going to be, you know, what we're going to be talking about in general and just the identity of social workers in general going forward. So, no, I like that. I don't, I don't think I ever heard him speak, not even like a put, <laughs> somebody putting a microphone in front of him just right. on a red carpet or something. So, yeah. he, just to hear him hear him speak and, and yeah. such a powerful important topic you know, yeah. for for us uh, mm -hmm. it's super important. I, I'm just looking forward to it. Like, like as soon as I heard about it when you told me, I was like <laughs> checking my calendar. Like, all right, I'm taking yeah. these days off. Like, screw screw that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm super excited. So we've already met with him. I'm gonna meet with him again next week. But when we met with him initially. Um, and just got a chance to, he had already signed on for the conference, but okay. you know, we had the conversation and he was like, you know, it's, it's high time we had, he said, this conference is long overdue. And he mm -hmm. said, it has to happen. <laughs> and, um, I didn't realize that he strongly considers himself a social worker. Like he identifies as a social worker. Oh, wow. I was like, I had no idea. Like I would think that with his level of success, mm -hmm. um, he would identify as a, you know, business professional with, yeah, some social work training, but he's like, no, he's like, I'm a social worker through and through. I was like, wow. Okay. <laughs> um, and I know he, he's, he's actually doing some work with some identity leadership work with the university of North Carolina, mm -hmm. um, and maybe another, a couple universities, but He's got a an identity leadership program that he is, um, you know, that he's developed and that they're going to be using. So, 
I'm just super excited. We actually already have uh, one of our keynotes for next year, but it's a surprise for now. So I'll, okay. I'll keep that. <laughs> yeah, next year. And it's it's also huge. So yeah. I'll look I don't, I'm kind of like, this year's conference lineup is already so dope. I'm like, I don't know how we're going to top, <laughs> top ourselves next year. Um, I have no idea, but this is definitely something we want to do um, annually. So, I mean, here's the thing, Bess. I could just talk about the conference all night, yes. but you've got questions for me. You better ask. Otherwise, <laughs> <I'll just> keep... <laughs> no, I, 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 I do, but but definitely, uh, is a you no know, running. How we talk about business and stuff is all about you know when you get to a point where you got to scale and like scale up. So for you that already have a the keynote for next year already thinking about next year's and how you topping that no that's that's what happens in in business so uh uh so it's great that you're already after the this inaugural uh conference that you're already scaling up for, for 2024 and and yeah. i'm not, i'm already thinking about you no know, 2024 as well a little bit and planning out you know, conferences and thinking about attending and Doing so many proposals to to speak in conferences, so uh, mm -hmm. trying to get ahead of the game with that. So, yeah, I mean, we already in fourth quarter, twenty twenty three. So uh, it's, it's grind time. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! You're oh, you're right. My goodness. <laughs> no, uh, but you mentioned uh, no mentioned a little bit of, uh, of your your story. I think it's important to to share too the, about you know you see like. We hear all the time, we're not in it for the money, we, we're in it for the outcome. And it's like, you realize it doesn't work for me. Like, I I, I could use my skills and, and do both. You can tell a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, um, at the time uh, when I had this epiphany, I was living in Jamaica. And um, I lived in Jamaica from 2005 until the pandemic. I still have my home there. In fact, I'll be there um, in December. And I'll probably be there through the winter because I don't like uh, cold. Um, but at the time I was there full time and I was teaching, I was heading up a social work program at a university and I couldn't help my students who sometimes were having a hard time getting to and from school with, you know, like $2 for taxi fare or something. I couldn't help them. I could barely help myself. Mm -hmm. Um and I was like, this, this is not right. Like I'm, I'm a social worker. I'm supposed to figure these things out. I'm also the head of a program. And how is it that I'm standing in front of these, these students, the social workers of tomorrow broke? Like why, how can I tell them that this is a viable profession? Um, I know it's important, but I would, I don't want them to go through what I'm going through right now. So it just right. felt very disingenuous. And um, I had also made a, a financial decision uh, that I thought I got a loan because I there was a hurricane that did some damage to my house and I got a loan and started to do work on the house. And then in, I invested it. I thought I was investing it, um, but I lost all that money. And so I still had the loan to pay back. Plus I didn't have the money to fix the house. It was a hot mess. And that's when it was like, wait a minute, I don't know about money. Um, so the first thing that came up, I was like, I need to figure out what people do that have money. Mm -hmm. And um, I just started reading. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I read Thinking Grow Rich. I read The Science of Getting Rich. Um, I read The Richest Man in Babylon. I read You Were Born Rich by Bob Proctor. And that's when I came up with Rich Social Worker. <laughs> I was like, we're going to get rich in here. We're going to get rich or die trying. But, uh, <laughs> and then, you know, what kept coming up through everything I was reading, because I was also subscribing to to blogs and, you know, YouTube channels and things. And everyone was talking about, well, it starts with your mindset. You've got to have a, a money mentality or wealth mentality or rich mentality. And I was like, what the heck are you guys talking about? Just tell me <laughs> what to think and I'll think it, I'll do it. Just tell me what to do. And they, they kept saying like, we'll start with where did you get your uh, lessons about money? Because we all, you know, are, are older versions of our six, seven-year-old selves. 
which in social work, you know, behavioral science, we know this, right? That's easy for us. But I had never made the connection to money and my younger self and, and messages. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. So I did it. I was like, okay, well, definitely family home. Heard my parents saying, you know, I don't have a dime to my name or, you know, I was poor as a church mouse or something. <laughs> and then speaking of church, you know, I was raised in, in a Christian church and, you know, hearing common messages about, you know, sacrifice and suffering like Christ and, you know, all of these messages that were not supportive of having lots of money. Mm -hmm. um, and then social work was the third mess third place that I got the most messaging around money. And like I said, when I, re you know, I could wrap my head around, you know, the home messaging because you can't can't help where you were born or the, right, exactly. what you heard. I can wrap my head around church because it's an institution and that's what the church does. But like I said, like it really was a blow knowing that I had willingly signed up for social work for a profession that did not value money on a whole, right? Mm -hmm. Blatantly. And, and what was so interesting was that every social worker I talked to only complained about not having money. <laughs> <laughs> at the same time we're saying it's not about the money i don't have it. i don't make enough money and and the other thing that i noticed was as social workers we uh i i kept hearing social workers say they need to pay us more they need to recognize our value they need to do this they need to do that, do that. and i was like wait a minute we don't even recognize our value like we we've got to start with us first uh how can you negotiate your salary when you're you don't you know, you're not researching what your salary should be. You don't know how to negotiate. Like you're not even looking into this. You're just happy to have a job, but you're complaining that they're only paying you this. Like that's on us, right? That's our problem. Mm -hmm. So I'm really about self, the self-empowerment, not to say that institutions and organizations and agencies shouldn't, shouldn't pay more. But when you come into a system um, or a, a a practice if the practice has been this is what we pay you and this is how we see you complaining about it will only get you so far you've got to actually you know like insert your voice into the the narrative to change that mm -hmm. um and so that's that's what i preach i guess from the rich social worker platform that social workers it's it's up to us individually don't worry the organizations and agencies and businesses they will catch on but we have to start uh, for ourselves. We have to recognize mm -hmm. our value. And if you don't know what your value is, then you start with learning how to recognize your value. You start with, you know, following your podcast or following Rich Social Worker or following, you know, all of these other uh, social workers that are talking about uh, entrepreneurship and mm -hmm. income generation and career ad advancement, things like that, right? So learning it's it, i i'll say before i even started my youtube channel um i spent years just learning learning and experimenting but just learning so i'm at a point now where like you you acknowledge me as your business coach and i feel super confident we can go into any conversation and i have it like this but that's because i've spent years in the trenches learning from others that know more than me and also practicing myself, right? So for people that are just getting started for newbies, you've got to learn and practice as well. There weren't as many voices when I started. So the advantage that you have is that there are tons of voices and there's a conference. Yes. <laughs> so so the, you're welcome. There you go. Um, and, yeah. the, and the key to that, you know, and that key point is that sometimes you just have to just create create events and create something in order okay you're not making this this money okay create something that you can make the money doing something so uh absolutely and you know i love that point i i actually have been meaning to do a, a youtube video on that um creating right creating your own your own economy as it were but um i i wrote a book called how not to practice social work and it was, it was kind of, and it was an experiment, number one, because after reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the author, Robert Kiyosaki talks about how rich people create money and he's like, they create assets. 
So I was like, I want to, let me see if I can create an asset. I've been meaning to write this book. Let's see if I can do it. So I self-published it on Amazon. But the, the cool thing is, um, since I'm a social worker and a lot of my friends are social worker, social work educators as well, it ended up that a lot of them ended up using it in using in their classrooms. <laughs> so mm. it worked out. Um, but also, so it was an asset, like it didn't cost me anything but time to put it together, right? Um, and because Amazon, you know, when you self-publish, you don't pay for that at all. Right. Um, it's print on demand. So when people buy the physical copy that I don't have to print a million copies. So that was an experiment in asset creation and it worked. My coaching program, not necessarily an experiment, um, but yeah, again, uh, Robert Kiyosaki talks about how wealthy people create value from ideas, right? And when I, that's why I promote to social workers, if you're not sure what you want to do as an entrepreneur, I think coaching and consulting is a good place to start because you're already probably coaching. Um, you're already, you know, encouraging people. You're already using the strengths perspective. You're already using empathy. You're already able to see kind of like a 360 of another individual or organization situation and kind of give different advice um, based on different perspectives. So coaching or consulting can really be an easy, well, I shouldn't say an easy, it's not easy, right? But right. Uh, a, I'll say a, that real horizontal move from where you are to you know where you want to be as an entrepreneur and start with a, you know, a, a small package. Um, some people are more creative. And so starting with a t-shirt shop um, or Shopify shop, that might be easier for them. Put some, you know, social work rants, podcasts on there and sell that, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, there's so many things that we can do, but that's what I, I really encourage social workers to start where to start your entrepreneurial journey. Thank you. And there, there's so many more things now that even when I graduated in 2010 to, to now to, in terms of ways to try to make money and out definitely the last three years, whatever idea popped in my head, <laughs> I'm going to try. <laughs> sometimes it worked and it, it hit. And sometimes, okay, we're going to try to work out the kinks. And, and I'm still working out the, the kinks a little bit. But just, I, I spent the last three years just like shoot your shot. Like just whatever, mm -hmm. like DM people, like collab and network and myself using the, the, the podcast and the networking tool and, and connecting with people and, from like all over the world and having like, listeners from all over the world and even like countries that are enemies with America <laughs> listening to the podcast so it's like you no know, it's been a, a interesting journey um get back to to uh the the conference real quick like who now I mentioned a couple of people who's going to be on like give like a little list of who's going to be there oh man <laughs> oh my gosh okay so I want to, I kind of want to highlight some of the people that aren't social workers that are going to be there because mm. I, I don't expect the social work community to recognize how big of a deal they are, but they're a huge deal. Um, so one, um, oh, I'll just, let me, let me give you, give you a little background. Okay. So there is an author who's super prolific. His name is Seth. Godin. And um, if you've never heard of him, if you're an entrepreneur or thinking about entrepreneurship, you must. Um, <laughs> you must. It's kind of a rule. <laughs> you have to like just sign up for his blog. He has one of the top blogs in the world. Or um, I'd say check out any one of his, I think he's got like 25 books now. 21 or two or three of them are bestsellers and they've been translated into over 36 languages. And I listen to podcasts. He's mostly on like business and leadership and tech podcasts and things like that. But I'll listen to a podcast and they'll always say, this person needs no introduction because in the <laughs> business and online world, he's such a, a big name. He's a, he's a leader's leader as it were. Anyway, 
Um, I was fortunate enough to work on a project with him uh, two years ago now called the Carbon Almanac. I guess a year now, year and change, called the Carbon Almanac. And um, it's a book. It's a book of facts about the climate and the environment and where we are. That's not the point. The point is the network that I've been exposed to because of mm. work with that project is bananas. And, and one of the things that, that being connected to that project gave me was an opportunity to pay attention to our environment and the systems that impact our climate and our world and things that we as social workers would probably care more about if we understood more. Um, but one of the things that came up was how our money impacts the client, the climate, how we use our money, where we spend our money, how we invest it, where we bank, that impacts the climate. And also um, our values, how our values impact <laughs> what's happening with the climate as well. So it's not enough to just be a good person or a good social worker, because if we're banking at, let's say, Wells Fargo or Bank of America or um, what's another big bank it starts with a W what, um, any big bank. I, I yeah. Don't... I mean, well, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, it's, it's the other yeah, one those, is, on. uh, it's fine. It's Ch and, Chase, and Chase. Chase, all of those banks, right. Mm. They, they invest in, even though they might have like a climate section or sustainability section or something, a lot of their investments and, and divestments are, with companies and organizations that are harming the planet, right? And so with that said, like that was fascinating to me to see how there's a whole sect and a movement of organizations and people that are helping individuals and companies pay attention to how you're using your money. And one of those is this uh, company called Domini Impact Investment, Dom, sorry, Domini Impact Investments. And what they do is they help consumers um, invest their money. So grow their money through aligned investments. And one of the things the research has shown is when you invest your values, so your values of clean air and energy, your values of human rights, when you invest in companies that share your values of you know, food for all and income equality, those investments do better consistently than typical investments that don't mm -hmm. care about your values or don't care about the planet, right? So not only do we make more money, but we get to save <laughs> our, um, our environment. And so I was so fascinated by that, that I wanted us to have a, a green panel, as it were, so that's what we're going to be doing. We're actually going to be having a, a few different uh, voices talking about conscious capitalism and what that looks like, right? So um, how, in fact, let me just read. I got to put on my glasses now for this. But we got, um, <laughs> we got a, uh, the title for one of our plenaries. And I mentioned Demini Impact Investments is going to be there. They're doing a, they're they're part of a plenary, but also Janine Furpo, who is the head of this organization called Invest for Better, that helps women primarily learn about investing because statistically speaking, I think women make better choices when they invest, mm -hmm. uh, like something like seventy five percent to one to to men seventy five. We like do better seventy five percent overall. Yeah, I've, I've heard that. Yeah, something like that. But women are like 3% of the investment proper population, right? Like we invest the least and we understand it the least. And so this organization Invest for Better specifically helps women like, you know, just learn about investing. And I, I took one of their investing courses, their angel investing courses, because my big dream is to be so wealthy that all I do is go around and talk to social workers about their opportunities to create wealth. And I want to invest in organizations and companies and individuals that are also entrepreneurial and doing good business. Um, and I'd love to do that for social workers specifically. So I took this course called Invest for Better, um, the angel investing course from Invest for Better. And Janine Furpo is 
the founder of that, but she's also been featured in Bloomberg, in Financial Times. Like she's a, mm. a powerhouse in the um, conscious capitalism space, especially when we're talking about like women and how women use their money. And, you know, social work is a primarily female dominated pr profession. So right. I'm excited that she's going to be on that panel. And then we've got someone from Atmos Bank. And Atmos Bank is really focused on, again, uh, banking for the environment, banking for the climate and helping us, you know, make smart decisions. So the name of their uh, plenary is called uh, The Power of the Purse, Navigating Wealth with Values. And they gave me the description, in a world uh, increasingly conscious of ethical investments and financial decisions where you allocate your resources is more important than ever. The panel explores the emerging world of conscious capitalism, emphasizing the power of financial choices aligned with individual values. You're going to learn how to direct your finances, be it where you bank, invest, or spend in a way that resonates with your core beliefs, paves the way for a more sustainable and equitable future, and allows you to build wealth and have more impact. Mm. That, to me, sounds super exciting. Oh, that, that sounds really good. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we're going to have that. We're also going to have, in terms of like people who are going to be presenting, um, Kayla Joseph and Kendra Bostic are both, uh, so I'll say this, we've got six tracks. So there's the career track, um, let's see, career, innovation, entrepreneurship, um, generational wealth building. Uh, we've got, oh, what else do we have? We have, ooh, wellness. And innovation we've got there's one more did i say entrepreneur yes. innovator generational wealth wellness career innovation financial wellness oh i hope i said them all i hope i said them all at any rate um so one of our for our within the innovator track we've got some people that are going to be speaking from the fintech space so I don't know if you ever heard of this app called Task Human. It's modeled after Task Rabbit, but it's it's an app that any one of us can go on and offer our services as like coaches or consultants or advisors and it's really kind of like an on-demand coaching platform. Oh, wow. Um and so the founder and developer of that Ravi, he's going to be speaking, that fintech company. Another woman, Andrea, is going to be on that panel as well. I can never pronounce her last name properly. Um, I'm, it starts with a P. <laughs> but she's created an app called Girls First Finance. And it's she created it because while living in Africa, she noticed that so many young women were trading sex for money so that they can go mm -hmm. to school. And so she was like, that shouldn't be. So the app that she's created allows young women access to grants and financial aid and loans, micro loans and, and scholarships. So she's going to be on that panel. And um, another, another woman, Courtney, has created um, an app as well to help mostly, I mean, it's geared towards women, but to help um, those of us in service professions understand money and finances as well. Um, I, I'm going to remember the name of it in a second. She just signed on, <laughs> but we've got a, this fintech panel. So I think there's such a huge opportunity for social workers as well to create our own apps, to create yes. our own tools, right? To solve problems that people have and to, you know, to build the change that we want. So that's really exciting. Um, We've got Grayson Howland, who's going to be helping us heal our money wounds. You already mentioned Catherine, who is the founder of the Social Workers Rise podcast, as well as um, the Social Work uh, Directory, mm -hmm. Social Work Therapist, Social Workers Rise Directory. Um, we, we've got, I mean, some heavy hitters in the social work space as well. Um, we've got, ooh, 
Rita Wolfson, who's actually the founder of Financial Social Work. Uh, so she is the OG of OGs. And she's going to be headlining our first our first plenary. And she's also going to be doing two master classes over the course of the the, oh, wow. the conference. So I, I don't therapists may know the names um Allison Purrier. Uh, uh oh, I just changed my screen one second. Allison Purrier, Tiffany McLean, and Maureen Werbach. Um, but they are gonna be doing a panel. And the title that they gave us was Obstacles, Regret, and Failures in Entrepreneurship. How three multi seven-figure business owners handle the hard stuff. So it's like, look, we're not even talking six figure. We're talking seven figure here, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I I can't go through everyone and yeah, I yeah. I can't, yeah, but I will encourage people we'll be to here follow. all night. <laughs> yeah, we'll be here all, all night. I will encourage people to follow the Instagram, um, which is SW Wealth Con. Um because we're we're highlighting the different speakers and presenters there. Yeah, it's uh remind people when when the dates are October 19th and 20th. So again, two weeks out. I'm over here sweating bullets a little bit because there's still a lot to do. <laughs> I know it's which, I know it's gonna be which great. I wanna which I wanted to ask, like how how is it like doing actually trying to run a conference and like all the work that that entails in case somebody wants to yeah create create an event because i know creating events is just a lot of time a lot of patience and a lot of work it's a lot of patience a lot of work i will say this i'm clear that my my main job has been to stay positive stay excited stay motivated and inspired to do this because without my motivation none of this is happening <laughs> so <laughs> You, you know, I would just say if you're going to do something uh, and this is kind of a principle for life, but definitely as this conference rolls around, if you're going to put so much of your time and effort and energy into something that's going to take time and your focus for an extended period of time, you need to be excited about it. You've got to be excited first. I would also say, like, get your cheerleaders lined up. You're going to have more cheerleaders coming, but you know, the thing that's really helped me personally is to have people that I could call on. So I had a, I had a, a, a little meltdown uh, a week or so ago, honestly, because um, the ticket sales, I was, I'll say this, I was equating ticket sales to a timeline and to my value. And I knew intellectually I shouldn't be doing that. But I was in a little bit of a downward spiral and I, I couldn't figure out how to get myself out of it at the, the moment, at the time. So I reached out to someone who I knew had my back and who I knew could talk sense into me and remind me of who I was. Because again, I know my job is to stay focused because otherwise I'm in the corner crying in a little ball and nothing's getting done, right? right. And so, you know, it happens like that sometimes. It's like, it's, it's like a little roller coaster up and down. I'll say for the most part, I've been emotionally great through this whole time. And I'm emphasizing that because that is number one, two, and three. But the next thing is have a team. I'll tell you how I got my team. Um, and anybody who's on LinkedIn, I did a post a couple of days ago. And I said, like, here are some insights that I've learned in planning this conference. And I said, even if you don't, have a clear idea of what you want to do, float the idea to, to your audience, to people who you think would be interested and, and hear what they say. So I, you know, before we had a speaker or anything, I shared with some people that I wanted to do a conference and the people that were excited and said like, oh my God, that sounds amazing. Let me know how I can help. I want to be involved. When we got that keynote speaker, I went right back to those people and said, okay, it's on, we've got the keynote, you know, here's when the team meeting is. Now, not everybody who started the journey with us has stayed, but the good thing is we've attracted other help and support along the way. That's another thing I've learned through this process. Um, I think being on 
the others being on the side of the consumer mm -hmm. before now, right? I would have seen advertisements for an event and I would have said like, oh, that's great that they're doing that. Never imagining that I could offer my services or offer to help or offer to speak or offer to, you know, post something, right? Or help organize, whatever. And what I've learned is that there, there have been a few people that have reached out and said, hey, how can I help? And those people have not only helped us, but some of them have earned themselves free admission to the conference because <laughs> it's like, we we actually needed this. You, you're This is easy for you to do. You love doing it. You're part of the team now. Like you share our value. Like you're as excited as, as, excited as we are. Like, right. yeah, we need a team member to do this. Yeah, we need somebody else. So that's been a lesson for me to be like, oh, wait a minute. If there's a conference or something I want to go to and be a part of, it doesn't, I don't have to have money, mm -hmm. right? I have to have the chutzpah to reach out and say like, hey, do you need help? Can I help? Do you have an extra ticket? Is there a way I can get a discount? Like, just ask. You mm -hmm. never know. Um, at this point, <laughs> <laughs> we're we're pretty much full. So, thank oh really? Oh, we are. We are. We're totally full. Like, we're 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 good in terms of, especially like in terms of the speakers. And well, we just I got mean, our last moderator. What's how that? About, how about tickets? Tickets, tickets still on sale. Oh, when I say full, oh no, no, we've got okay. it's online, so we've got okay. space online. Um, I just want to be clear for the viewers. Yes, the, thank, the you, thank you, thank you. Yes, yeah. <laughs> no, we've got space online, and um, the good thing about we're expecting about two hundred fifty people at least to register. Wow. Yeah, we're. I to be honest, I haven't looked at ticket sales today, but um we are climbing up there. And the good thing is we've still got two weeks. And and what we know about people is that they usually buy in the last two weeks. So, so we're not worried at all about um, ticket sales it, because also it's, we didn't do this for ticket sales. Mm -hmm. We, this, as Seth likes to say, it's an act of generosity. This is a love letter and a gift to um, the social work community. This mm. is a gift to my younger self that wished she had something like this, you know, in her day. Um, this this is a, like, we're changing the profession, Baz. This, we've never had an open dialogue about money mm. as a profession before, right? About That's investing, true. about how to negotiate your salary, like all in one space. I mean, we've been having little side conversations now for a few mm. years. But this is a first. So we're make we're literally making history. In 10, 15 years, we'll be in the in the books that they won't be printing anymore. Um <laughs> in, the, in the online annals that say the first It'll be in the ebook. <laughs> we'll be in the ebook, right? But but by then, social workers will be, you know, will be making close to a hundred thousand dollars out of school, right? Or they'll be able to negotiate. Like this conversation about money won't be a won't be taboo. An uncommon, it won't be taboo. It won't be uncommon. It'll be just like, you know, when business students graduate, like it'll just be as common as that. And um, so I'm super excited to be part of the change and uh, yeah, just, just part of the movement. To, to finish answering your question though, about planning a conference, um, I didn't consider myself a particularly organized person prior to this experience what i've learned about myself is how to organize for my personality type and for who i am so i'm an enfp for any of you uh, myers-briggs fans out there but we are not known for our <laughs> for our organization we're much more known for you know being visionaries big thinkers and a, a bit of chaos um or i'll say creativity but what this has helped me do is it's helped me create systems that work for me. And those systems are like Google, but creating a Google, a Google Drive and then organizing Google Docs and, you know, creating a one pager with just different links so that I can easily share and find things. Mm -hmm. And um, 
that has been invaluable. Like that's a that's a life lesson. I wish I had planned the conference, you know, a decade ago to learn this skill. Um, <laughs> but it's been it's it's really grown me up, I'll say, as a professional and as a leader. So I'll say this too: if you if you want to catapult your own, um, I don't know if it's success is not the word I want to say. Your own growth. That's what I want to say. If you want to catapult your own growth, do something that's bigger than you. Um, I was thinking as I was doing this, I was like, okay, now I've done a conference. I, I can do this. What's the next thing that's bigger than me that I don't know how to do? Um, I want to tackle that. And so that that's coming forthcoming too. I'll tell you maybe if we do another podcast interview and if it, if it happens, but I'm already thinking about the next big thing because I've grown so much with this. And I've made so many amazing connections and it's just been magic. And so I really encourage, if it scares you, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Um, you will gain wings along the way, as they say. So, yeah. How how can people uh, get, get tickets for, for this conference? So, listen, I hope your people do this quickly because ticket prices are going up at the end of this week. Um, because we're going to be moving from the Stripe platform. Um, so right now they can get tickets at socialworkwealthconference.com. Spell that out. Um, the You can get the general admission pass for $150 right now, or you can get the, um, or you can get the VIP ticket pass for $375. Those go up uh, at the end of the week because we're going to be moving all of that uh, website and all of that information to that hop in platform that we're going to be using. Um, so it's kind of similar to Zoom, but it's just fancier. Um, and so with hop in, there's a surcharge, right? So it's like get in like tonight or tomorrow at the latest, I would really say. Uh, yeah, as soon as possible. Awesome. Yeah. And where, where can people find you? Last oh, question. they can find me. <laughs> I'll say most people find me. Well, before now, most people were finding me on YouTube. Um, so youtube.com forward slash rich social worker. Um, and I think what's cool about YouTube is you get to know me a little bit. Um, I I'm I am on Instagram as well at rich social worker. Um, and of course the website rich social worker.com. Um but yeah, that's where you can find me and follow me. And also LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn, I'm Eva Ford. And my Ford is spelled with an E on the end. So E-V-A-F-O-R-D-E. And uh, yeah, I I love connecting with, um, I love connecting with people in general. Uh, on LinkedIn, it's interesting because you get a lot of people who want you to, you know, they're like, hey, I'm part of this coaching network, you know. <laughs> You can be a part of the coaching network too. And I'm like, oh, thanks. But I'm already in so many things. Um, but I love connecting with people genuinely who are also, you know, striving or doing good work or making an impact. I, I think it's just so exciting. So yeah, find me. Let's connect. Thank you for coming on. I'll see you at the at the conference. Absolutely. Bye. <laughs>